Here we go. Hi, everyone. It's Sandy and Ken. It's the Sandy and Ken Hour. And we're coming to you from Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. This is our, our second full day. Let's see. Third full day. We got here on Sunday. I don't know what day it is. You don't know what day it is. It is kind of crazy, right? No one's a 12-hour difference between Los Angeles. And when you guys are sleeping, we're out doing stuff. <laughs> we're doing stuff. And on top of it, when you guys are awake, we're talking to you. Yeah. So it's like, it's always on all the time. And uh, it's it's very different. Who here has been to Dubai? If you've been to Dubai, raise your hand. Dubai, one, just one hand. Your okay. hands up, I've been here. Well, no, I'm, you're with me. But I've been here before this time. So let me explain Dubai. Well, you had a different, and we'll talk about travel with experiences with the people you're with. Yep. Dubai, as I would have put it yesterday, and you agree with this, it's a architect's dream. But an engineer's nightmare. It's an engineer's nightmare. There are buildings going in every direction and swaying and hanging over each other and attached, and two buildings are attached to each other with a center building floating. You're like, what? <laughs> Certain things defy gravity, it seems like, but it's everywhere. Everywhere you turn is a building that's so damn unique. And there is so much money here mm -hmm. because people don't realize this. The Emiratis, if you are born in Emirates to an Emirate family, you get about $100,000 guaranteed income a year. Yep. Plus, you get uh, free maternity, free education. And you don't have to wear pants. Free, well, we'll talk about that. Free marriage and free uh, funeral. All of it's taken care of. Everything else is basically up to you. So it's a minimum of $100,000. And by the way, this is low compared to Qatar. Qatar is two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars for every Qatarian, so it's it's crazy when you look at what happens here. So guaranteed income for anyone that is an Emirati. Um, clean. What do you think about clean? It's so clean. It's almost eerie clean. Almost like who's cleaning? <laughs> <laughs> we did that one. We, we we did get up really early. Every day we've been up about four or five, walking around. And that's where you see the Bangladeshis. You see a lot of the people that work for uh, the cleaning crews and the ones that are out there to tidy everything up. They're and like they, barefoot in fountain scrubbing. Yeah. That's how clean this place yeah, is. Yeah, we were, we were- Actually, at, a guy was pushing like a wheelbarrow of leaves. I don't even know where the leaves came from. He forged them from somewhere in flip-flops. Yeah, in flip-flops. And, and even inside the pools, they have scuba gear on inside the fountains, cleaning the algae in scuba gear. So it's like- There was a guy on the side of a building with a feather duster, dusting the side of the building. I'm not kidding. We're not, like, not cleaning a window, dusting a building. <laughs> it's like, what? As soon as he was done, it was dusty again. He, he was going back to it over and over again. <laughs> A uh, couple of things are uh, masks. If you do not wear a mask, it is a $1,000 fine. And the irony is it's not about wearing a mask around your face. It's just having a mask on your face. It's the illusion of paying them to the law by following the law. Yeah, so if you have a mask on, holding your chin up, <laughs> you're okay. If you have a mask hanging off your ear and you're like fumbling with it. You're, you're okay, yeah. Uh, but when you walk into locations, they do want to, of course, have a mask on, but walking around, everyone has a mask on outside. But the people that are here kind of think the whole COVID thing is all BS. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, we're just doing this because, well, we kind of have to do it. Everyone follows the rule here. We had this conversation last night with a, a very interesting gentleman who says, you will never hear a protest ever happen here. You will <laughs> never have someone argue with the law. Nope. They just comply, which in a lot of ways, it's, it's, it's kind of nice. But of course, it shows that they are not a, a culture that wants to be combative. Nope. Right? OK, a couple more things. Actually, I want to let's just dive into. Uh, Starbucks is really expensive here. It really is. A two teas is $10. Iced tea is $6. Yeah, so. You don't even get a refill. What? I mean, you don't get a refill in the States either. It doesn't matter. It's not $6 for an iced tea in the States. It's, it's, it is expensive for your food isn't that expensive when you go out to restaurants, but supermarkets are because there's different levels of taxes. There's no income tax here. 
So there's no income tax, but there's taxes on everything else. Yep. So just when you, when you come here, you can see that this is a very progressive country. Um, women do dress in the full burqa. Uh, men are optional. You notice that fashion is really important. The malls are insane in size. Mm -hmm. If you watch our stories, we were in a mall yesterday. We had in Italy. Oh my God, I was so excited. The mall, in the mall, they had restaurants that you would see. Red Lobster. I haven't mall. had Red Lobster for like 20 years, <laughs> but I'm gonna go in Dubai. Five guys. Uh, <laughs> they had huge restaurants in the, mall, chicken. in the mall. <laughs> But like a whole restaurant, not like a food court. Like you go in and there you could see 150 people in the KFC. Mm -hmm. It's not. There is an aquarium in the mall that has people, sharks, many of them. People could scuba dive in. There was a dude in there. There was in the mall. There is a full, not ice rink, but hockey rink in the mall. <laughs> so when you go to the mall, you could live in the mall. It's huge. You would never need to leave. And this is just one of many malls. And we got there, the mall opened at 10. We got there about eight. And we walked around the mall a little and we did two and a half miles in the mall, just walking around. It's crazy. And it was just as clean on in the mall than it was outside the mall. Let's see, I love being in, yeah, yeah. Being, we're, we're, we're definitely tourists and we'll keep that because what I realize is even people that live here don't discover stuff. No. Hey, I lived in San Francisco forever. I have never been to Alcatraz. What? You've never been to Alcatraz. I know. It's like when mind. you're there, you like, 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 go one day, and then you never go. Wait, wait, wait. What's that, Sunny? I was just going to say, it's like in LA, how frequently do you go to Disneyland? Never. Every year? I used to? <laughs> Only when you have guests or if, if your son is visiting from Chicago, right? Exactly. No, I like to go when it's Super Bowl and nobody is there. Uh, Every year in the Super Bowl is the best time to go. And by the way, hey, just a quick quiz question, or not a quiz, but a little fact that no, most people don't know. When you go, if you've ever been to Disney World or Disneyland, when it opens, people run in. You always go, why are people running in? There is a secret about Disney World and Disneyland that only a few people know. The very first person to get on what's called a sea ride, like the Pirates of the Caribbean or Magic One Mountain. Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, excuse me. <gasps> if you are <laughs> the first on that ride, you get what's called the magic ticket. And that magic ticket puts you first of line in every ride. So that's why you notice people run like crazy to be first in line is to get that magic ticket for that one day. So people train to get the magic ticket at Disney World and Disneyland. And same thing with the other locations too. But I know you wanna show this. This is Sandy's photo, just to give you an idea. And the only thing that was modified in this- Why you gotta ruin it for everybody? Okay. Why you gotta ruin the fun of the picture? Okay, you ready? It's such a tattletale, everybody. Just pretending he didn't say that, omit that part from your memory bank. Okay, you ready? Yeah. There you go. Here it is. This is at five in the morning in Dubai. Five thirty. Yeah. What do you guys think? How cool is that? It's pretty cool. The right? buildings, everything there, other than the puddle. Okay. The puddle is there. You made the puddle. I made the puddle amplified. There was a puddle. Yes. But that's the only. Everything else is real. Like, can you see this building right here? This is the new museum of the future. It's the most expensive building per square foot ever built in the world, okay? It right now is at a standing of $250,000 per square foot. <laughs> it's crazy. The thing is we were too early. Had we waited an hour, there were men on top of it. Oh yeah, Little yeah. dudes up here cleaning it and mix, fixing it and doing whatever they're doing with it. So. A little Amazing. Dubai, and by the way, it is great. I, I didn't realize you did that. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah, you ruined it. For I didn't ruin you, it, everyone. He stole your illusion, everyone. That puddle's real. <laughs> Go with it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna start with our journey real quick. We're going to. The first... puddle really was there. It was just dried out. Was... I added the water. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now you tell me. Uh, okay, <laughs> want to talk about traveling? If any of you are planning on traveling, 
you have to be aware that COVID restrictions are real everywhere. Once you leave the United States in most cases. Yeah, we almost didn't make it here. Yeah, so our challenge was to get a COVID test that is within 96 hours of us departing. And the problem was Thanksgiving was in the way. So most tests had a certain period of time that you could take it. And then they give you results, 48 hours. Right, and- And then the flight is- Yeah, it was- A lot of hours. So a metal guy, actually Felix, has a company that does rapid testing. Testing can be very expensive. We were looking in Vegas because we're in Vegas. How much were they? $700. For a rapid test. Because they know it's, a com- it's not a commodity. It's tough to get. Felix cut us a pretty good deal. It was really good. But be prepared. And Sammy, you could say the same thing. You, you had your test to get into Bali. With you. What was your time parameter for your testing? Um, I needed it. To, it. It was only valid for seven days when I landed. But it was a two, three day turnaround. Seven days is a long time. Wow, that's amazing. But, and you had to keep it everywhere because you went to Qatar first. They wanted it in Qatar. It was, yeah, Doha and then Jakarta. They, but they mainly looked at it many times while I was in Jakarta. So be prepared. Uh, we're thinking about going to Dubai or to Abu Dhabi, which is about 50 miles uh, north of here. And we will go through two testing facilities where they take the rapid test on our finger Mm -hmm. just to allow us to drive on the highway. They're very, very strict here. So just be prepared. If you got COVID, you ain't traveling. Mm -mm. No. Second, the plane. We had the privilege, if you've been watching our stories, to fly Emirates first class. We paid for round trip tickets, $3,000. Now you're thinking, does that sound like a good deal? Does it sound expensive? Well, Sandy sat down, we weren't able to sit next to each other and she sat next to? (laughs) This entrepreneur whose company has the largest holdings of mobile mobile homes, mobile homes in the world. No, he's coming to metal Saturday. The question is, was one, two or three or four contacts that was made inside first class worth the investment? I say yes. Yes, and uh, Mighty Paul says sometimes it's $14,000. That's right, we paid 3,000. You can do this. So travel has changed a lot because of COVID. It's inventory is wide open. So you're paying for coach, you might want to see if there's a huge discount to sit in business. Mm -hmm. And if you're in business, there's a probability that they might just bump you up to first. So pay attention right now to when you're traveling of the deals that are happening. You don't need to, uh, you really just need to have a good relationship with the people that are at the front of the gate. Next thing, luggage. You want to dive into it? Oh, luggage nightmare from hell. In the States, what's the maximum weight in the States? 50 pounds. 50 pounds in the States? It sounds like a lot. It's not a lot. It's- Our suitcases are virtually empty, but it's what's in them that's so heavy that makes the weight go so high and takes you off the chart. We paid from our first flight to get to Chicago so we could get to our first class ticket. We were on a regular flight on United. We paid $260 in luggage. Yeah. And the reason why everyone needs to understand international is 70 pounds. So if you're flying a flight in the States, for example, to go to a connecting flight, that's going to take you international. You have two different luggage weights and little things like this, you know, if this sits inside your luggage, this is a pound and a half. You think, oh, no big deal. Well, but your shoes are four pounds. So if you take three pairs of shoes, you're at 12 pounds already and this- And there's nothing really in your suitcase. In your suitcase, by the way, might weigh five pounds or 10 pounds. And the cover you put on your suitcase if, weighs a pound. No one, you're the first to do covers. I no, saw I'm not. There were like five people no, covers and my luggage looks so good. Your luggage did look good, but I didn't see other people with luggage covers. Because they don't have good luggage like I have. Yeah, well. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I didn't have good luggage. I wouldn't have a good luggage cover. Your luggage either. was really nice, by the way. It's beautiful luggage. Mine and was, now it has no scratches. Yeah. The cover looks like hell. 
Look at what it says, two jeans, two jackets, a pair of my 15s is, yeah, okay, it's true for Mighty Paul. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mighty Paul by itself. Man. Exactly. And, and a tip for travel, wear your heaviest shoes and your biggest, puffiest clothes. Wear them. Wear it. Going into the plane, because you can take them off on the plane, but you don't want to pay for them going through luggage. Yeah. Boy, that'd be really weird if, if you see Big Paul wearing giant galoshes. <laughs> hey, it'd be and, smart. <laughs> and his ski outfits and all that. But really wear as much as you can on the heavy side while you're getting into where you got to go. Okay. I know it says Mighty Paul. I love Mighty Paul. So another thing is this. Guys, handle your own luggage. Yeah. Handle your own luggage. Please listen to what I'm saying here. Because you know your luggage. If a porter comes by and goes, oh, let me get that for you, let me get that for you. They don't know your luggage. They broke my luggage. Literally, my handle on my luggage, which was- Snapped off, you know, like a carrot. I would have handled it a lot differently. This person just decided to kind of pick it up, not knowing it was 69.9 pounds. 69.99 Nine pounds. Pound. He picked it up, snapped. And now I have a broken piece of luggage that's sitting here that we're gonna have to now get fixed, which is a pain in the ass. Okay, next. And we briefly talked about this in our last one, and that is, all right, Sandy, even by the way, we did bring this up, so of you may have not seen this, and that is you have to be prepared when it comes to things like your backpack. The re and people would come up to Sandy, and by the way, this backpack company reposted one of Sandy's posts because of her describing it to the pilot of the plane. Who now owns one and all the flight attendants. Why is this of interest to us? Because it's a security bag. It has RFID compartments, so you don't get your passports and your credit cards scanned by, th by thieves. It has zero access from the front, so no one can walk up behind you, unzip and take your things. It's cut proof. It's stab proof. It has hidden compartments with a case that covers the inside. So if you do open to access your laptop, no one sees what's actually in your bag. It has a compartment for your charging. And it also has a special compartment. So when you're staying at places that have keys, this is a cut through cut proof cord. So you can keep your keys, your car keys, whatever attached to your bag and it's super secure and it's light. And something I like, I'm gonna put that in there. Your pockets are against your back. Yep. So our passports and our money and all that go here. So it's against us. See, I don't worry about anyone stealing because they can't access it without obviously intruding in my space. Got it. So it's this is important. Fancy. And then also on our luggage, our luggage is got no zippers on it. Why? Why no zippers? No zippers because someone can take a ballpoint pen and pop the zipper open your luggage, take what they want, or put something okay. in, which is even more dangerous if they're putting drugs or whatnot, and then zip it back shut. Even if you have a lock, if the lock doesn't clip to the bag itself, so you can lock it and then hook it on, if it moves in any way, then they just zip it shut, even if it's locked, and it'll look seamless, and you'll never know they were in your bags. Yeah, be prepared that people may not steal things from you. They might use you as a mule yeah. to get in, uh, to bring stuff into the country. And if they mule some marijuana on your bags into Dubai, you's going to jail forever. Yeah, it's true. And it may not just be marijuana. It could have been something as simple as being cannabis products. Yeah, that's another thing. Do not take your cannabis infused anything. Not even the, the rubbing Quanta stuff. Leave that at home. Because even at the airport, it specifically says zero cannabis infused products. Yeah, it's a prison fine. It's prison time. Just for cannabis infused. CBD stuff is seen as if it's a drug. Yep. I know. <laughs> I can yep. see go, what? So be aware of, this is this country here. So we're in Dubai. Dubai is a, uh, it's a very progressive Islamic country. Very progressive. It's great. And you're but really saying still, that I can't bring my drugs at all? No, but you CBD, I'm drugs. saying CBD. Well, CBD. I'm saying something with, like some of you might use like CBD, um, something for your throat. That is not CBD. No, that's not, that's vitamin B, but I put CBD in here, no, I'm kidding. Here. But be aware of that. Be aware that something that is completely legal in the States. Not here. Is not legal here at all. Nope. Not so even checked luggage? Also, not so, even what? In checked luggage? 
No, no, definitely not in your check luggage. Nothing. That's why having a bag that does not zip is important because let's say you're traveling and there's someone who overheard your conversation and knows they're going somewhere similar. They'll put their drugs in your checked luggage and then grab your bag at the end and get through or steal it from you. So you want to make sure that you have the type of suitcases we actually have like old school, like in the seventies, you know how they used to actually have the locks that would like click like a briefcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have briefcase style locks. So there's no zipper, no one can access them. Now our carry on luggage, like our small carry on roller bags, those have zippers, but those are with us the entire time. So that's fine. But for anything checked, make sure it has the briefcase style locks and you don't put any drugs in them whatsoever. Prescription medications are only okay if you have an actual prescription for them, it yes. has to be labeled. So if you're putting your prescription pills in different baggies, that's a big no-no. You wanna make sure you have them in their original bottles with the original label to your name. If it's not, that's- But they know if it's vitamins. vitamins. We did joke around about this. Yeah, they know about vitamins. So I wanted to show you something. Most, many of you might actually take your vitamins with you. What we did instead is we took, this is a, a daily amount of vitamins, all the things we gotta take, and we put them in bags. So we're gone indefinitely. We have no idea. So we made three months worth so 90 of these little baggies. Which took a lot of weight away because we're not paying for the weight of the plastic containers. So we little things. And, and then the secret to these bags is when you have them, store them in a dry, dark place. So wherever you get to, put the, we put them in a, there's nothing going on in our kitchen, so it's dry in there. So we're not cooking in there. It's weird. And uh, we put these guys in the pantry <laughs> sealed shut so they see no light of day. <laughs> it's weird. That's a weird kitchen. There's a lock, like a key on the fridge. What is that? What? I don't know. I think it's like diet control. Like you're not eating up there this time. Why did you sound Indian? Because that's the guy who comes in the house. Oh, he does. He's from he like does. Bangladesh or something. He is from Bangladesh, I think. They do. <laughs> All right, so uh, we covered travel. Oh, another thing that kind of sucks, be aware of this. So the discounted tickets that we got, and we got discounted tickets, we used uh, miles. Our miles tickets were seen. So even though it says first class, the first class benefits, for example, lounge, totally can use lounge. But a chauffeur under a first class didn't pick us up. Nope. Um, there are so many travel apps that are out. Travel apps have huge discounts on it too. So pay attention to discounts. That's cool. So we, yeah. we we were able to get here. It was $150 through Emirates to get here on a on a chauffeur. I think it cost us like $12 through a, uh, a coupon for Uber. So we looked for coupons. So once you get to an airport, look for coupons that are all over the place that help you discount. Like for example, we just had breakfast and breakfast would have been $40 a person. I found a coupon, it was two for one. And I'll explain about entertainer in a moment also, which is really interesting. Okay, um, oh, next, LinkedIn. We talked about it. Does it matter? It does, because what's happened since we've been here now, people are looking at our LinkedIn. We're not bringing name card or business cards with us. They ask what our LinkedIn is, and right from the phone, they're saying, hey, what's your LinkedIn uh, uh, profile? So people are looking at you real time. That's so true. It's not about, oh, let me have your card, and I'll go look at you later on. They're, they're summing you up in front of you. <laughs> That's why personal branding is so important. It is. So. I've had people reach out to me from Italy saying, I'm following you at the conference. I can't wait to hear you speak. And I'm like, oh, are you going to be at the conference? Oh, no, I just found you online and I'm following you now. Yeah, but LinkedIn. <laughs> hey, so we want to make sure that you're LinkedIn because anytime now you're doing something for business, LinkedIn without a doubt has become the de facto tool at these events. And this is a very, very big event. There's 25,000 people showing up in person at this event starting on Sunday. Which is small, because usually it's 100,000. Yeah, it's, it's legit. Um, also, social media being used properly. We've been posting social media stories on Instagram. Sandy's really good at Instagram. I've been doing it on LinkedIn and on Twitter. I'm really impressed by what I'm getting on LinkedIn as responses. People are watching us at a professional level using LinkedIn stories, which are very similar to Insta stories, and uh, getting a lot of feedback. I'm getting uh, a lot of restaurants and uh, places that are almost like point of purchase where you go that are watching us on LinkedIn saying, hey, come in, check us out. Here's a discount code on LinkedIn, not on Instagram. 
And that's fairly new on LinkedIn where you have stories. So if you looked on LinkedIn, let me just show you real quick. You notice on the very top, you have these like stories that you can pop up there. People are paying attention to this a lot. So be aware when you're traveling, use your social media in a proper way to get people to watch what you're doing so you can, you, you like that photo, don't you? No, I'm just uh, looking at something that's on your LinkedIn. My LinkedIn, was there a problem with it? What are you looking at? Yeah, I yeah, know, it's part of it. It's there, we can make stories. We're so cool. You can post the metal and everything. Yeah, this is the new feature I love. You didn't know about that? No, I know about that one, but I didn't see that it attached to your little guys. Oh, it attaches to everything, I love it. Okay, um, water, please be aware that local water is very different than international water. International, like Fiji. Fiji? Fiji is very expensive here. Pierre, or Pierre, Perrier. Perrier. Perrier, smart water. Those are considered international waters. So expensive. They mark it up by 10 times. So a smart water like this will be 10 to $15, where this is 15 cents. I think it's so cheap. <laughs> it's crazy because that's where the markups are on water products. Yeah, they do that value added tax. Oh my, but not tax, it's just marked up. It's crazy. So, they add the tax and it's marked up. Okay, here's a fun fact about Dubai. What are all the Ubers? They're like Lexuses and they're Mercedes Lexus. and something fancy. Very high-end cars. You don't see people driving and they're very proud of their cars. Insanely clean. Uh, they pick you up on time. They, they, don't, they don't talk to you, which I kind of like actually. You know, you get inside an Uber and they just want to talk because they're just so damn bored probably, <laughs> so bored. right? Especially in the United States where no one's taking them anymore. Yeah, they're just bored. These people just get, you get in the car, we can hang out, say, they actually took a nap. It's really comfortable. And you get to your location, but they're Lexus. It's like these really nice Lexus. All the cars are Lexus. So if I go on to Uber right now, let me call, call the Uber app up. Make sure your Uber is up to date. Oh, here's another crazy thing. You don't pay for Uber until four or five hours after you've ridden Uber. It's weird. So I'll get a charge saying, hey, are you okay with that ride that you took five hours ago? Great, can you pay now? He's <laughs> like, what? Like, why now? Why not right after I get out of the car? Nope, it's right after that. So let me show you something that's kind of crazy. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna go to, well, I'm going to here. So that's the bad Uber location. It's weird though. They only do like a two person maximum per car. So what if you have a family of three? Yeah, that's a problem. So because of COVID, they're trying to keep you down. Like restaurants, how many people? Three per table? Yes, three per table. Three people per table. So if you have a family of seven? Yeah, well, you got everyone at different tables. So they're they're taking the COVID thing pretty seriously. They really are. But that's it. I just wanted to share. Uh, oh, a couple other things. Internet, be careful of it. It can be spotty, not the best. So bad. If you are watching content and you want to make sure you are staying in touch with what's going on, get a... VPN and sometimes they don't work. Yeah. And don't let your device touch the internet without it because then you get flagged and then you can't watch anything. Yeah, so we like ExpressVPN, which has been working great. And yeah, her, one of her devices got flagged because she went on it without the VPN and now she can't even use. Well, no, the VPN wasn't working and yeah. then it logged me into the regular internet. And then before I had a chance to like get off of it, it marked my account and now I can't get on anything. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, guys. It's it really yeah. sucks when you can't finish Discovery and you're in the middle of season one. It's okay, okay. It's okay. Popcorn time. That sounds like uh, a first yeah. world problem to me, Sandy. It is such a problem. It's, it's hor I'm holding her back right it's now. It's his fault. I never even wanted to watch Discovery. It's, it's Star Trek, by the way, guys. I I'm got her through the Star Trek process and she's loving it's it. It's good. I'm telling you, our neighbor totally listens to us and he started watching it too. Our neighbor being who listens through our Event. walls, the yeah. events. Okay, that's about it. That's all I got. Anything else going on? Uh, no, really. Is there anything yeah. else going on? Do you guys have any questions? We love questions. It's question hour. It's only 10 30 in the morning for us. <laughs> I like this time, don't you? Oh, yeah, we're is not it, like is, is it cleaner than Singapore? Yes, yes. actually, surprise. Really clean. It's surprisingly cleaner. A um, couple of things that are different. Singapore should be cleaner because it rains so much. 
And since it doesn't rain as much, I think they overdo it being clean. Yeah. Now what's interesting this weekend, they're going to seed the clouds this weekend to force it to rain. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. They're going to seed rain this weekend. So they even told us, hey, you're, we're seeding, be aware around this time is when we're seeding so they know when it's going to rain and they're going to use it as a cleanup period of time. So talk about controlling everything. They're controlling even the weather here. <laughs> Very controlling. Um, Wait, they women. seed the clouds? They yeah. put salt. They have, they have airplanes that shoot salt canisters into the clouds that cause it to rain. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So there's certain times when there's clouds out and other times like right now the clouds going away, but early in the morning, yeah, there's tons of clouds only in the morning. And that's when they seed because in the afternoon, there's no more clouds. So there it's, it's called seeding and they will do that. I think they very said, seedy on Fridays when they're seeding it. So this whole weekend, it will rain. And the irony is they have no storm systems, no sewage systems. So there's floods. So they have to maintain. Their cars float away. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, epic flood. Yeah, expect floods. You've seen videos of it. Yeah, Elton, it's so true. They, they were just talking about that today. The floods can get pretty bad. He's all laughing. Well, it's just kind of funny. because so the guy said from your hotel, if you cross the main, main highway, you would actually have to swim to the other side. But, you couldn't walk. There's no way to get across. Floods, right? If they're seeding the clouds and they know that it's going to flood, why don't they, know they it's going to flood. do something about that so that it doesn't flood? Eat a little less? They do it once a year. This is the weekend they're going to do it. We're here for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of excited. A shirt, a shirt that says I was in Dubai and all I saw was this crummy flood. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And then also alcohol is insanely expensive. I, we don't, we don't know. Drink, so we, we don't, don't really Yeah, know. we really don't know. We don't know if it's expensive. I heard um, like beer is like 80 bucks. Probably. What a beer is eighty dollars? Eight, eight, oh, eight. Like maybe. I mean, the yeah, ironies were worth some pretty high. The Starbucks is crazy expensive. Okay, so just stay away from it. How much is Corona beer? That's not eighty. Bucks, right? <laughs> they don't serve that here, and if you drink oh, it, do they yeah, have wear that? Wear like concerts or theater shows or something right now? Well, we don't. We're putting on the biggest event starting on Sunday, so we'll, we're the first big event. I'll keep you up to date. That'll be next week's um, our hour and we'll talk about it. Here's something that's interesting. They're going to probably uh, open up gambling out here, which is really interesting. And um, because they realize it could bring in so much more money, but the irony is the Emiratis will not be able to gamble. So it's designed specifically for the tourists, not for the population. Now, Singapore did the same thing. Singapore made it so it was illegal to gamble for Singaporeans in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, if you would pay, I think it was 50 Sing dollars, then you can gamble if you're Singaporean. Mm -hmm. But they believe that it's going to transform. You think Dubai is wealthy now with gambling, like Sheldon Alderson and the people that own the Palms Hotel, they're all building more and more hotels on different parts of of Dubai that are a bit remote, planning that gambling is about to come to this part. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of what else is interesting. Everything's just so clean. I just oh. love how clean it is. Are you guys going to go to uh, Burj Al Khalifa? That huge tallest I, building? Oh, we took awesome pictures in front of that. Can uh, you go on the, top of the it? We're, we're going to go to the Burj. Yes, we'll go to the oh, Burj. Wow. That's a different phone call. Oh, another thing is a phone. I'm talking about phone, we'll bring you another phone. Bring another phone? Yes. Can you please. use your drone to take it, pictures, Ken? Yeah, Not got the here. drone. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm gonna try it. Gonna Wait. go to jail. Okay, oh sure. Okay. This is over. cool. This is us in front of the bridge. That's oh my god, wow. Ken took it. He got in trouble for taking the shot. So I was laying on the ground. I was laying on the ground. They don't want like you. So yeah, we we we, cool. we did a lot of photos. We'll do we'll do the bridge. We'll do that. Uh, there's a restaurant up there too. We're doing a lot of things more after this event on Thursday. We'll do the camel rides and all the touristy stuff. 
We're going to try to go to uh, the Great Mosque, which is in Abu Dhabi. We'll try to do all those things. We're posting stuff on Instagram like crazy. Instagram is really the place that we're going to be hanging out. By the way, hey, I also want to bring up this. Our main phones. Hello, main phones. Our local phone. Throw away. No, local phone. Okay, this is important. So I want you to think about a couple of things. First, remember your local phone is where you have a phone that's unlocked, where you can buy a local SIM chip. So let me give you an idea. Data rates in the United States, if you want one gig, it's generally about eight to ten dollars for one gig in the States. Here, if I want 15 gigs, it's about ten dollars. So the United States, I think, is the seventh most expensive data country in the world. Mm -hmm. Here, it's super inexpensive. So it actually might be less expensive to buy data in a country you're going to and use that as your hotspot. Yeah, it would make and much more sense. Instead of getting it from the hotel or instead of getting it from wherever you're at. So buying and make sure your phone is unlocked, everyone. Because if you have a phone from Verizon or T-Mobile or AT&T, and you think, oh, great, I've got a phone through. It might be locked where you can't use a local SIM chip. So make sure your phone is completely 100% unlocked. Okay, so you can do those things. So we did that. What? Also make sure uh, we use T-Mobile because T-Mobile's got a great international plan. So part of our plan is free data and text. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of those things. Um, God, there's so many things we've done on travel. Uh Steve, uh, vitamin D. Oh, when you get to a country, try your hardest to go to bed at a normal time. So if you arrive in a country at noon, try to stay up until 8 p.m., no matter how tired you are. Because if you go to bed, that's where the jet lag kicks in. So we were really good. We got in at 9, something like that. No, we got in at 7. 7, and we stayed up until about I still went to the gym, worked out, and then, yeah, so we, we went crashed. to bed at our normal time at 11.30. And even though we got up really early, we got up like 4 a.m., we were still in a rhythm, so now it's we're not jet lagged. I don't think we were jet lagged at all. I'm just a little tired from everything, but no jet lag. I think it's tough. I don't know. Is, is Sammy still on this call? Let's nope. see. No, she might be. I, I turn it off if you don't see their cameras. No, no, uh, she's Sammy's not. Sammy left. Yeah, Sam. So think about Sammy. Sammy's in Indonesia, and she she did a good job, but she's maintaining U.S. hours. What? What? <laughs> Elena said, oh my God, T-Mobile is good for something. Yeah. I know it sucks everywhere in the world, except that? for everywhere in the world. Yeah, it's only the United States. That's <laughs> no, I think it's great in the United States. Melina, yeah. are you serious? You have problems with T-Mobile? I have problems. I never had T-Mobile because everybody who had it complained. <laughs> yeah, they complained like five years ago. They fixed it up so much. I love T-Mobile. Stop. It's it does. True. It would hang up all the time and have no service. Five like, years ago. Like five weeks ago. T-Mobile and Verizon normally are the, are the two carriers who, whose phones are unlocked, automatically unlocked. Um, the nice thing about Verizon, if you're traveling internationally, is, is that they can just give you the code that you could punch in that'll unlock the phone on the fly. I get it, but it's so expensive to use Verizon International. Here, here's another thing I want to teach you guys. Get a, um, what's that? I've had Virgin Mobile. For eight years, Virgin Mobile. I don't even know who Vir who is exactly. that. MD, no, no, but they're they're a they're white labeling someone else's service. Yeah, T-Mobile. In, in, <laughs> in Australia, Virgin Virgin Mobile ended up being Optus, and Optus is part of Orange, I think. No, I know. Uh, they now they became Somebody Boost Mobile. Like that's correct. Year. It is they Boost. Boost Mobile. Yeah. But Boost is oh, part of T-Mobile. Boost is part of T-Mobile. No, is it T-Mobile or is it Verizon? T-Mobile. Boost is Boost is Boost is T-Mobile, which is not. So, is using T-Mobile. Virgin, Virgin uses Verizon's network. Even T-Mobile in oh, some so areas uses Verizon's phone. network. Okay, I, I wanted to talk about uh, why Google Voice can really be helpful for you. Get a Google Voice number, because I've been making all my phone calls to the United States using Google Voice on my computer. So I'm talking through my computer, my laptop, and it works great. They see my 312 or 310 number, it works great. When someone calls my mobile phone number, it forwards to my Google Voice number, 
and then it rings on my laptop. So I'm getting no incoming phone calls to my phone. So there's no fees or charges. Now, if somebody FaceTimes me and FaceTimes audios me uh, or WhatsApp me, it goes through data, which is fine. But they make so much more of a premium on those phone calls. I've made it so those phone calls won't ever happen. And if I'm not by my computer, it goes right to voicemail. So forwarding your phone number to Google Voice is a way to jump over those additional charges. Mm -hmm. Just a thought, it works quite well. Let's see, I'm trying to think of all these things that, um, oh, point to point, let me show you this. This is the site, uh, point P O I N T point to point dot com. Let's see if this works. Let me go share the screen. Hi, baby. You know what's cool about traveling with someone you, you really are into? It's fun to travel. It is. So point to point is this. The, you know what's this, fun about traveling with someone you hate? Yeah, well, that's nothing. So look at this right here. <laughs> so find someone you're hey, into. Hey, hey, for a second. This is first class nonstop from New York to Hong Kong. It's $4,000 by that's round trip through this company. Let's see what other prices they have here. I think. If I could find international, let's see if they could bring it up here. Come on, are you yawning? Mm -mm. Are you yawning? I, no, I am, thanks. So round trip from North America to Asia, first class under $4,000 round trip. So right there, round trip from North America to Europe. Wow. To the Middle East. So I want you to look at point to point there's to Africa. We did this last year. We flew Singapore Airlines. How awesome was that? That was amazing. Yeah, and what we did with Singapore, which was really cool, is we decided to mitigate our stop and we did a layover in Thailand and we made the layover for a week. And then we went to Cape Town from uh, Johannesburg from there and then we flew back. But we made it so the layover was long enough to have an additional vacation. And I think that was... $3,700 for business class, it was totally worth it. I mean, that to me was those long hauls to make all the sense of the world. So go look at pointtopoint.com if you're going to do any form of international travel. You just can't beat it anywhere else. What's that? He wants to know what's the best way to call you now that you're overseas. Uh, FaceTime. FaceTime or FaceTime audio, Stephen. He's on the Wi Fi most of the time. Yeah, Wi Fi or data. We got a killer data plan. But I just want you to be aware of right now, if you do things right, go into first class or business class, I returned off. With the premise that you're going to meet people, you want to socialize and network with other people in there for your own business. It's a great place to do it. You got a captive audience, and if it's international, they're there for as many hours as you're there, 14, 15 hours. It's a great place to connect with people. So you're going $3,300 is so much, Maybe not. You get one business deal out of it or two, you've totally justified that plane ticket right away. Totally. So and the food's better in first class. Food's yeah. pretty awesome. And the bed is better. Okay. Oh, the show, pillows are better. They give you headphones. Mm-hmm. You have your own bathroom. It's much better. I gotta show what I fall up with Ann. <laughs> what did you get? Ah, here it is. Okay, two things about it sounds like a ruckus in the kitchen we never use. Two things about international you got to know. Oh, this is the best thing ever. International Nutella. If you haven't tried it, you're missing out. Okay, Why? so the United States makes this stuff. It's in Canada. And they make it in Canada, Mexico, and somewhere else. It's terrible. If you're eating American Nutella, you have no idea. You might as well grab a Hershey's bar and just chomp on that. That's garbage. The good stuff is made in Europe or anywhere else because it actually has more hazelnuts, which it's nut Ella, not choco Ella, okay? So it's supposed to be hazelnuts and not chocolate. It's a hazelnut chocolate spread, not a chocolate hazelnut spread. So in the United States, the Americans are like, oh, hazelnuts, we don't need that. They took out most of the hazelnuts and they made it mostly chocolate, which makes it nasty. And the good one is the one that's mostly nuts, which makes it amazing. So make sure you get it overseas. It tastes good. It's so good. I fell in love with these, never heard of it until the flight. It's okay. like licorice, caramel, and chocolate. Yeah, it sounds horrible. It's un- I, I ate it, I go, oh my God, I have died. This right here <laughs> is mouth orgasm. I came in my mouth, I did. 
That sounds horrible, by the way. That sounds oh. so gross. Never, oh. never say that again. Just I never want to hear that again, for sure. Right. You can't unhear it. I can't unhear that either. Get in a hoe. Never, you can never that. That's so wrong. It was black and chewy. Ah! Just stop. No, stop. That's worse. <laughs> All right. Let me know. Uh, what, 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 what size is what size is what size is that Nutella? Is that Nutella? <laughs> Oh, this is small. For, it's not small. Yeah, well, I mean, they have like the individual packs, which are like that, and they have they have different but, sizes, but the big ones are like this. But for Mighty Paul, heavy. this is just one scoop for you. This is like no, no, I, no I, I was gonna, I was gonna give you a hidden, a hidden, a hidden, a hidden hack. Above a certain mill, a milliliter, you, if you open up the lid, underneath the lid is a built-in spoon. You have to peel, you have to peel the bottom off, and there's a built-in spoon for you. Yeah, I, I don't know. This one is not because this one's too big. Man, that right there is definitely yeah, an excellent. expert of Nutella who knows his yeah. stuff. And then they have the little tiny jar ones that are like this big and they're super Ooh, cute. That smells really good. Because it tastes really good. Oh my God, I gotta have toast after this. <laughs> the We're best, all... uh, best, best is get best is get a chocolate croissant, heat it up for 15 seconds, and then add Nutella to it. You know, as gifts, when I used to fly from Europe back to the United States, I would bring people Nutella and they think I was crazy. So like, I could get it. And then they try it and they go, oh my God, I'm never buying this stuff in the States again. It's disgusting. Yep. And, and in South Africa, you guys have the good Nutella. Guess what I did with this? Awesome. All right. Uh, I guess he's, he's, he's orgasm again. You've shared okay. enough about what you've done with that, man. Just saying. I want to talk about, I want to talk about currency real quick. $100 bills. Chris. You want to make sure you do not bring any money that has folds, tears, Bins. anything in it. So take that um, one. Markings, yeah. pen markings, stamps, any sort of blemish, they won't take it. So you want to go with your money and go to the bank and get Chris brand new dollar bills. And don't wait until the last minute. Please don't. Because the banks sometimes don't have it. They have to special order money. So if you go to the bank, say, hey, I would like to order a week away, right? I'm traveling. I need a uh, hundred $100 bills or I need, you know, a hundred dollars in pure ones. And they have to special order that. They don't always have it. Bring it because people either one will exchange it a lot easier or two, they like it as tips. They go, oh, this is really nice. So just be very conscious of your money. Don't just take what's in your pocket thinking that's going to be great and you unfold it. It's got creep. They, they, they're grossed out by that. They're totally grossed out. Uh, let's see. There's, you know what it is? There's so much that we've been doing. Do you have to give them Paul. other money for that? Or can you just go to the bank and ask for $100 bills? You mean when you're going to travel? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, what, what would you give them to give you $100 bills? Nothing. You, you just would give them your currency. They just give <laughs> no. You give them either a hundred dollars in change or old hundred dollar bills. Yeah, trade them in. You want just brand new them. ones. Okay. Just, 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 just so you know, because of, because I, Eddie, Eddie at the Buddhist temple and stuff, he he does about ten to twenty grand during during the, when they stuff those envelopes and they're crisp two dollar bills that he orders, but you have to order them like three weeks in advance, depending on how much you're getting. And just so you know, because when I went to exchange my $100 bills and my ones at the bank right before we came, they were actually laughing behind the counter. They said every year, because some guy had just come in and did that $2 request. She said every year, there's one to two people that come in and ask for $2 bills and they never have them. They have to special order them and they always laugh. So when you go into the bank to ask, know that when you leave, all the tellers are laughing at you because you're that one or two people. I like those $2 bills. <laughs> I think they're cool. Well, they're Ed, Eddie, Eddie's, that, Eddie's that one person. Yep. I, I'm one of those people. I like Maybe those. Cheating. I think they're just the coolest. I really do. Uh, of course, you guys know power. We, because of our overweight packing, we did not bring an additional power strip that converts the power, which is kind of a pain in the ass. We're going to have to get another one. Um, it does leave a lot of issues not having enough power because I want you to think about how many devices you need to be powered up. Now, what's nice about Apple products they make it so they don't need a converter. Yes, Apple products like your iPhone, your iPad, your computer, you just need to have an adapter. But if you bring like, we have a portable 
steamer. And it actually, when I bought it, I made sure that you could use it internationally. And it said, as long as you use a converter, it works. Well, they didn't say as long as you use a really badass, powerful, expensive converter, because a standard converter is too weak to give it the power it needs to steam. So now we have to get another converter because we can't use the one we brought. Yeah, and you gotta make sure you have all the right plugs. Let's see if I show some things. The other, thing, the, other, the other thing that I find when traveling internationally is, is there's certain apps that you can put on your phone that'll show you where all those power free power banks where you just lay it down and, you know, it charges, it charges without having to plug into any cord. You just, you know, especially with your smartphones and stuff. Yeah, but that doesn't help you at 2 a.m. when you check into your hotel and you need to charge your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, make sure you have the right plugs. None of these are the right plugs for where we're at but just have the right ones. Also guys, I gotta tell you about this entertainer app. Oh my God, I don't know, do you guys have entertainer? Uh, Elton, um, are you, do you have the entertainer app down in South Africa? Uh, yes, we do. Okay, but I've never does used it cost? It. <laughs> do, you, do you use it? Uh, no, I've never used it. I have the app on my phone, but I've never used it. It is so interesting. Amazing. So entertainer, cost $150 a year per city, per city. Now let me explain what it does. Think about Yelp that shows you now, once you're a member, when you walk into the restaurant, it's two for one. So it's not 50% off. It's do you have to bring another person in with you? Um, like my, 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 my partner that's out here, he, how much did he save in last year? $4,000 last year. $4,000. In food and Just in food. So yeah. it shows all restaurants that are associated with that entertainer app. So you're thinking $150 per city. So if we go to Abu Dhabi or if we go to Muscat, which is down in Oman, we would have to stay long enough to justify the $150 in food value. But this company we should pay attention to. They're doing something right. But it cost him $150 for the year and he saved over $4,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. So he would have spent that additional money just eating at the exact same places, doing the exact same thing, but because he had the app, I, saved it. I'm just more interested in the company. That's a fascinating company to get people to pay $150,000 on an app, which by the way, if you're doing it through the iPhone, that means Apple is getting a third of that, which is even more amazing, right? They're, they're always taking their cut. But pay attention to this company, this entertainer. Uh, the reason why, Mighty Paul, you gave us those, those um, coupons, those discount things. Yep. They're, they're not as good as I thought they'd be. Do you know how they work? Yeah, I, I, I do. That's what I was hoping for your feedback because that, that, that's an area that we would, we would tweak. If they're not working that well in 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 because yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about offline. Okay. Um, it, it, it's an idea, but it, it's got to be developed a little more. You're, are you on the entertainer? Okay. App? I think so. I need to go to Dubai, so I'm gonna guess. Hopefully, this is the right one for this. Okay, there, there. That's the entertainer app. Yeah, that's it right there. By the way, the one that Sandy just sent you. And uh, guys, I just we want to make sure you know this is our new time. We'll have topics starting next week. We just got here. We were unpacking. It was less. It was better for us to stay in a corporate apartment than a uh, hotel, and the reason why is because I'm going to be doing stuff at you know one, two, three in the morning because of metal, and I want her to be able to sleep. If we were in a nice hotel, we would have one big room, and she would hear my wah, 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 voice wah, going wah, wah. constantly, right? Hey guys, it's Saturday's metal. Welcome. Be like, <sighs> it's exactly what I sound like. It's kind of eerie, isn't it? Yeah, I'm so good. <laughs> Because I attend all the calls. Yeah, no, you don't. I know I don't. I don't see one of you guys. It's guy time. I let you have your guy time. You appreciate the guy time. I do. I love it when you guys have your guy time. Because I'm all hanging with the girls. We're having fun. We're sleeping. We're hanging out. We're doing girl talk. We're cleaning the house. We're doing whatever. It's great. <laughs> uh, any last questions before we bid you adieu? So I'm curious. What is there anything that you found surprising something that was that was totally unexpected uh, so far in your experience yes. how clean it is no we were at the gym and after 90 minutes they kick you out for 30 minutes so they yeah, can clean it. So there's, this, like, there's this new th the thing out here they want to make sure the gyms are super clean so every 90 minutes they shut down the gym for a half hour to clean the gym and to reopen the gym and you're supposed to just know yeah but that that was that was 
because that's all COVID, obviously, right? That was a COVID thing. Um, again, I think how clean it is. Uh, yeah, we were really surprised at how clean those places. How about this? Your your tap on your credit cards and debit cards work everywhere. So yeah. you don't have to swipe. It's just everyone taps, which I like seeing. So we're a lot more advanced when it comes to that. Yeah, um, make sure you use a credit card that doesn't charge international fees. Yeah. yeah. And a tip for Ken specifically. Uh, Ken, you guys are going to go to Abu Dhabi, right? There is a... Yeah, you might be able to find this in Dubai too. There is this uh, cuisine. It's very local. It's called Dibbi. It's basically, you You know how we, um, you remember that Afghan restaurant um, closer to the old oh, place, so right? He yeah. used to serve that rice with uh, ra raisins and, and yes. uh, meat in it. It's that kind of dish, but it's it has like mm -hmm. that UAE uh, Abu Dhabi flavor in it. Highly recommended, especially for you. We're going to go to a, a very Dubai restaurant later on tonight which I'm very excited about. They probably will have it. It's one of the older stuff. By the way, I have to tell you, it's so interesting on both LinkedIn and Instagram, how once you're here, um, and I'm not sure if any of you are verified, I am, they follow you like crazy. So I have all these local restaurants now that are trying to get us to come in because they want us to Instagram or talk about it being verified. So I'm definitely utilizing and leveraging that. But yeah, I definitely want to try that. Thank you, Sunny. Anyone else? Hey, Sonny, congratulations on doing your own show. How's it going? It's great. Today we did the second episode. Um, we had more people. Really good conversation. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It takes a little time, but it, congratulations. I'm really proud of you on that. Really great Any stuff. Other... I was there. Yes, Sandy? Yes. Can I ask you something? So as a woman, do you have to follow certain protocols? Be in conservative the way you dress and everything is it still so like be conservative don't walk around with your parts hanging out and your shoulders exposed and looking super sexy and fly like it's so easy for us but we need to just dress <laughs> it down so i'm wearing longer sleeves i'm making sure my shoulders are covered even when i work out i make sure i have a long sleeve shirt on and i cover my butt and i'm just i'm more conservative there are people here who aren't but they're mostly known as tourists and they're not respected the same okay so just be conservative. That's respectful. I think it is anywhere we go. Yeah. We're, we're very conscious of not touching each other. Mm -hmm. Last time Sandy was here with um, some guy. Some she, guy. She got a ticket. He for... hugged me. It was hugging. We weren't even doing anything. He just hugged me and they gave us a fine. Yeah. Yeah. But that guy was a dick. So yeah. he, he deserved a fine. He definitely deserved a fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah, let's, let's But let's, you want to be mindful of the local customs. You don't want to stand out. Another thing is try not to dress so flashy that you really set yourself apart because you become a target. So if you're wearing really expensive shoes, really expensive jewelry, target, and you're yeah. completely anywhere you travel to, you become a target. Yeah. Right. So you want to just make sure dress nice, dress not like in dirty shoes and stuff because people oh, yeah, don't dress be, yeah. nicely, but don't dress flashy. There you go. Guys, they would have we to clean the floor after you if you have dirty shoes. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to have dirty shoes. We really appreciate you hanging out with us. This is our first just, Inter international call. Yeah, literally, and it's going to be like this for all the time. Forever. We, we'll talk more about uh, next week about what the events are like and how to actually connect with people. We have found an amazing place. We're going to be in Bali starting January 2nd. We'll be living in Bali uh, indefinitely in Big Paul, or excuse me, Mighty Paul. We'll be there in Steven and all you are all welcome to hang out with us out there. So we'd love to see you out in Bali with us. Yes. And uh, that's it. Anything else? We'll see you next week. I'm going to have one of these right now. Oh, all right. you know he's going to have an old oh, Linda, Linda, thank you, thank you for this. Awesome. Right in his mouth. Bye, everyone. Make sure you end the vlog.